Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt the Printing Nerd and in this video you will learn how to assemble the lower part of the 100. In the first part of the series we already assembled the tool head and the upper part of the frame. We have also prepared the built-in components for high speeds and we've learned what pitfalls we should avoid when assembling the gantry. Today we will assemble the lower part of the frame and we also look at the print bed to make sure it doesn't block when moving. So get ready, but as always we have to clean up the parts before we are ready to assemble the bottom frame. After we've cleaned all the parts, we can start adding heat inserts into them. Compared to the top frame, we have only a handful of heat inserts installed on the bottom part. Let's start with the back part of the frame first. First, the heat inserts for the back connector. Next, the heat inserts for the back frame. These are new. I've decided to remove the two back rods of the Z-axis and replace them by two printed parts. This makes the construction even stiffer and also the bill of material a couple bucks cheaper. This change will be part of the next release of the printer planned for fall 2023. And last there is also a small addition that I am currently testing and that will come with the next release. Proper cable management. I have added two hit inserts to be able to attach a clamp that will hold all the wires going down from the top frame into the base of the printer. Let's have a look at the front part of the bottom frame. Here are only 4 heat inserts and all of them are new. Many of you who started building this printer gave me the feedback that the tolerances for the rods on the z-axis are not suitable. A few thought that the holes were too big. Other felt it was not possible to press the rod into the holes so they had to hit them with a hammer and the rod can now be only removed with brute force. Tolerances can vary depending on the material you use, the printing orientation, the size of the infill, the temperature of the heat bed and even the room temperature. For example, warping can be avoided almost completely if you use a heated enclosure. All in all, there were too many variables to ensure that the tolerances in your prints are correct. So I decided to change the mounting mechanism for the two Z-axis rods. With the upcoming release, there will be clamps on the top frame and on the bottom frame that hold the Z-rods. This should make the build of the printer a little bit smoother. Now that you've assembled the frame, we are only one step away from connecting the top frame to the bottom. But before we can do this, we have to assemble the print bed first. The part of the print beds are big and therefore it might happen that they warp during printing. Please double check that all parts are straight before starting assembling the print bed. Also make sure that all residues from the supports are removed, otherwise they may cause small gaps between the connected parts so that they cannot lie flat on top of each other. 
In both cases, the carriage will not run smoothly and this could result in layer lines appearing in the printed parts. The print bed is designed so that the center of gravity is on a line that connects both lead screw nuts. If you have followed the recommended print settings, the print bed should be balanced. However, it can happen that the center of gravity shifts, for example due under extrusion or when you're using material with different material density. Please double check this before installing the print bed. You do this by balancing the bed on top of your hand. A good center of gravity should be within the lead screwed nuts, idly exactly in the middle of the hole. Speaking of lead screw nuts, we don't use heat inserts here and the screws are threaded directly into plastic. So please be careful not to over tighten them. In the print bed, I use steel bearings. I would not recommend dry lens here because they have a higher starting resistance, which may block the print bed on Z movements, which causes layer lines. So use steel bearings instead, or you can even print some by yourself, like I did in my previous build, but I wouldn't recommend it. Although my self-printed linear bearings worked fine, it was a cramp to get them printed within the tolerances that both the inner and the outer diameter needed to fit. Here I decided for this build and also for the bill of material that further savings would not make sense. Speaking about design decisions, in the last few weeks there have been many questions about the printer, about design decisions and also suggestions for improvements. Would you be interested in a format where I answer most frequently asked questions, maybe once a month? Give me feedback in the comments and if so, leave a few questions there I could answer in the pilot episode. Now that you've assembled the print bed, you're ready for connecting the top frame to the bottom. Stop! Not so fast. Remember I said we are using steel bearings for this build? In contrast to dry lens, steel bearings require maintenance, which means that we have to lubricate them before we can use them. Most steel bearings are covered in oil to protect them from corrosion. This oil is good for protection, but not a good lubricant. We have to lubricate our steel bearings with grease, so we have to remove the oil first. During the day I soaked the bearings in a bath of IPA and every few hours I pulled the bearings over a rod so that all the residue could come off. After the bearings are clean, we can lubricate them. We do this by sealing both sides of the bearing, one with a tool to keep the side closed and the other side with a tube of the lubricant itself. We try to hold both sides as tight as possible while pushing the grease into the bearing. The tight fit is important to press as much lubricant as possible in every small section of the bearing. We do this until lubricant comes out of the edge of the tube. Then we grab a rod and squeeze the excess lubricant out of the bearing. We can use this lubricant directly to fill the next bearing. The greasing process needs to be repeated periodically depending on the printer usage. I make sure that I clean the bearings and replace the grease at least once a year. By regularly lubricating your bearings, you ensure that you will still be able to enjoy your printer for many years to come. Now that the bearings are prepared, we are ready to assemble the frame. In order to connect the top frame to the lower part, we place both face down on the table and screw the two back connectors to the frames with 8 M3 10mm screws each. Then we turn the printer 90 degrees to the left and tighten the four screws on the left side. Now repeat the same with the right side. Next we turn the printer on its back and remove the C-rod holders on both frame parts. We insert both rods into the print bed and place them into the brackets on the front face of the printer and attach them with the two top and bottom frame C-rod connectors. After that our frame is built up and we are ready to attach all the electronic parts. But this is a story for another video. Stay tuned for the next part of this assembly guide. To not miss that, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. I know that in the last weeks there was not much content about speed printing on this channel, but I promise this will change as soon as all parts of the assembly guide are recorded. But that doesn't mean that there was no progress in the past. In the last week, I was able to adjust a couple of things on the gantry. To test them, I've printed a couple of speedboats and I was able to shave off another 6 seconds compared to my previous record. If you like to watch the whole video of this attempt, 
you might consider to become a Patreon. There I upload exclusive content and also the newest blueprints of the printer as well. If you don't want to join this generous group of Patreons today, have a look at the info card. There you will find my last recorded speedboat attempt. Download it, take the video editor of your choice and increase the speed by about 2% and you will get a similar experience as my Patreons. Another way to support this project would be to hit the like button and comment on this video to help me be visible on the YouTube algorithm for suggesting this video to other people. So that's it for today, stay tuned for more content and now get out of here.